All right, sleep paralysis. What is it? How does it happen? Why does it happen? And how you can move in it. Basically, all the things you need to know in order to conquer this potentially terrifying state of being. And now it's nighttime, which is the perfect setting for this topic. So, after a long day, it's finally bedtime, and you go to sleep like you regularly do, but instead, this time, you wake up in the middle of the night, and something feels a little off, okay? So you open your eyes, and maybe you see this shadowy figure, or you hear this creepy, raspy voice talking to you like it's right next to you. This makes you panic a little bit, and for good reason, but... Instead of being able to move and get up out of the bed to see what's going on, you're completely paralyzed and you're stuck there. This instills even more fear because you don't know what's going on. Why can't you move? In this specific scenario, what you're experiencing is sleep paralysis. And essentially what's happening is your mind, which is actually separate from your body, which some people don't realize is waking up before your body wakes up. For purposes of this video, when you're in sleep paralysis, I'm gonna refer to that as you being in your spirit body versus when you're physically awake, you're in your physical body. Now, doctors, they're gonna give you a very scientific explanation as to why this may be happening to you, which basically involves dipping in and out of REM sleep um, the same explanation you have for having dreams, which basically makes no sense because anybody who's experienced sleep paralysis knows how different it is from an actual dream. As a believer and practicer of astral projection and believing that that is different from dreams, obviously I think sleep paralysis is more of a spiritual experience rather than just a dream. But it doesn't matter what I think about all that. It matters what you think about all that. So really it comes down to what you want to believe. And it's pretty simple. You can either write this experience off as something terrifying, like a nightmare type of thing that you don't want to happen. Or you can look at it as your foot in the door to actual projecting and possibly exploring a whole new world that exists outside of the physical world. For those of you who view this as a complete nightmare situation, you don't want anything to do with it, all you want to do is wake up out of it, this part's for you. There's a couple really simple things you can do. One, if you believe in Jesus or a higher power of some sort, or just something in general that can help you, say in your mind, I don't like what's going on, please help me, Jesus, or, or whatever. Because if you try to physically speak, it's going to sound something like this. Like you'll only be able to like kind of mumble a little bit. Two, if you don't want to ask for help, simply question what you're seeing, hearing, or feeling. Apply the physical world's physics to your current situation. Or three, try really, really hard to physically move your toes or fingers or something along those lines. And then boom, one of those three should wake you up and then you'll be free to live your regular life, never questioning if something else exists or anything like that. For the other people who believe in a spiritual realm outside our physical realm, stick around. You might find some really interesting things that can help you on your journey. There is a few different reasons that you may be waking up in sleep paralysis. For one, maybe your mind has more recently become more active. Um, you're thinking about more stuff while you go to bed. Maybe it's harder for you to fall asleep. So in general, a more active mind could be more subject to wake up uh, while your body is asleep. Two, you might be becoming more aware of the spiritual realm itself 
and just believing like something like that exists or becoming more in tune with your spiritual side, therefore waking up in that form. Three, maybe something physically has happened to you to cause you to be a little bit more restless at night and not able to sleep through the night more fully. For example, for me, when sleep paralysis started happening to me, it was around the same time I developed tinnitus in this right ear. And that's basically just a constant ringing in your ear. And I went from being able to fall asleep within five minutes every night to taking me a half hour to 45 minutes to fall asleep. And my only guess is this ringing was bothering my mind so much at the time that it was triggering my mind to wake up before my body. Now, I do want to take a moment to acknowledge the fact that this experience can be quite scary. Um, straight up. When you're in a position where you feel like you can't move your body at all, when you're used to being free to move around and do whatever you want all the time, it's a lack of control that you're not used to. On top of the fact that you hear creepy or raspy voices or maybe see shadowy figures, that's scary. But it's very important to understand it's only going to be as scary as you let it be. All right, so literally nothing bad will ever happen to you in that state. So at the end of the day, the only thing to fear is what you're allowing yourself to be afraid of. And this concept goes hand in hand with being able to move while you're in sleep paralysis. So it's time for the juicy stuff. What maybe some of you came for, how do you move? It's pretty simple and don't overthink it. You have to get away from the way you think and move when you're physically awake and transition into a different mindset where you're moving in your spirit form. Now, for some of you, it's going to take a good amount of practice. But basically what you want to do is lay down in your bed, close your eyes, and instead of physically moving your arms or hands or legs or feet, Keep everything still, don't move a muscle, and simply visualize what it would feel like to move those body parts. You can practice this anytime. You don't have to be in sleep paralysis. To get you started about what I'm talking about, it's something as simple as imagining your hand doing this or this, or imagine your body shaking back and forth while you're not moving. So as you visualize this feeling over and over again, you'll actually start to feel like it's happening physically. This is yourself getting more attuned with your spiritual body. And if you can expand that feeling to the majority of your body, there's a good chance you'll be able to move while you're in sleep paralysis. Now for some of you, that's going to be enough to disconnect your mind from your body and you'll be able to go about and explore the rest of your house. You can go outside and do whatever you want. For others, you're going to still be partially connected to the physical realm, and you're going to feel a very strong gravitational pull, say, when you get on the ground or try to get out the room or something like that. So there's also a few things you can do to eliminate this gravitational pull. So for one, you can fight this gravitational pull to your body with straight willpower and say you get on the ground and your upper body feels disconnected enough but your lower body is still like being pulled to where you're physically sleeping okay you can grab on to um, doorways or doorknobs something to keep pulling yourself further and further away from your body it'll basically feel like you're like a stretch armstrong doll and your lower half is being stretched out while your upper body kind of fights to get away from the pool. So once you get a certain amount of feet away from your physical body, the gravitational pull is going to go away. I'll say maybe like 10, 20 feet. And my only guess about what's happening here is that you finally stop thinking physically because you're far enough away from your physical body just to not think about it anymore. And then you're fully embracing your spiritual form and 
just going about like this is you and this is what you're doing right now because that's really what it's all about attuning with your spiritual form attuning with the environment around you that you're seeing not being scared of it staying calm and realizing everything's okay you're not you're not going to get hurt this is just an experience that you're having in a different realm all right another thing you can do if maybe you feel like that gravitational pull is way too strong to fight it's a little disorienting which it can be um so stay calm in your bed and close your eyes upon closing your eyes focus on your peripheral vision while keeping your focal point kind of straight all right and then from there take five or six nice deep relaxing breaths like And as you're doing this, feel the breath starting from your your chest and heart area. And as you inhale and get to the height of your inhale, it comes up to the top of your head and then exhale. Do that five or six times. You might see some flashing lights in your peripherals. And what this is basically doing is calming yourself down and getting yourself more attuned with your spiritual body. And odds are you'll be able to move about and feel pretty weightless after that really what it comes down to is if you are accepting your current form or fighting it so if you're thinking you don't like this you don't know what's going on you wish you were just physically awake or being being able to physically move that's what is going to keep you from actually being able to move versus actually embracing the situation Accepting that you're in your spirit form and realizing that you're now in a different realm with different physics. And this new realm basically is limited to what you put your mind to. So anything you think of, you can make happen there. So this is why I say keep it simple and don't overthink, all right? So think and then do or just do. So eventually you'll get more natural at it and you won't need to visualize doing things. You'll just end up doing them because you'll be used to the environment. It's all about staying calm and cool and relaxed. If you're all worked up, it's not going to happen because what happens when you get in a panic state in real life? You kind of clench up, your muscles get real tense, your brain gets all stressed out, you can't think straight. I was going to add some personal experiences that I had with sleep paralysis, but there's a lot of them, and this video is always already kind of going longer than I wanted it to. So hopefully this helps some people remember that there's more to life than meets the eye, and you are only limited by what you think is possible in both the physical realm and the spiritual realm. Thanks for watching, and I'm out of here.